Hi, so a viewer called Mark sent me this to have a look at and what it is, it's a power supply for a fire alarm and he sent us a little note in with it, so we'll just see what he said So, what he says is, he says the fault is when there is a power cut the two 12 volt, 12 amp hour batteries connected to the white plug at the bottom in series to make 24 volts keeps the alarm fully powered up with the panel displaying mains fault but when the power comes back on the power supply fails to see the mains so it continues running off the batteries till they go flat and then the fire alarm dies so all of the outputs are working which I believe is on this connector here and he's wrote the voltages down that they're either present or should be present so anyway, I had a look online just, just to, to see if there was any information on these and I found the price of them. I mean, how much would you think one of these little boards would cost? I mean, you know, what would you say, £50, £100, £200, £300, £400? Well, <laughs> I nearly fell off my chair when I seen the price of these. Actually, I found them on a site and they wanted £422.40 and pence for one of these. And I was like, what? <laughs> I nearly fell off my chair. But anyway. Right, so. I think what we'll do first, I think I'll get the microscope out. We'll have a look over this board. We'll see if we can see any damaged components or anything. But I've got a feeling it's going to be on the high voltage side. Because I mean if all the outputs are working that's going to be on this side here So I would have thought the problem is going to be this side I mean it could be wrong but that's kind of where my me, me gut feeling is at the moment But we'll get the microscope out, we'll have a look over it, see if we can see any damaged components And then we'll take it from there Right, I'll get the microscope set up Right, so let's have a look over this board then uh, What have we got here, there's a little 5 pin I see there 7S14B, I'm not sure what that is. That looks like the main switch and I see there. Uh, 3845B, I'll see if I can find a data sheet on that. Looks like we've got an opto isolator there, or opto coupler. A couple of capacitors. few resistors and that looks about it on that part let's just have a look further around the board here so this is over to the low voltage side now and we've got a zero ohm resistor uh, what else we got an IC there not sure what that one is I'll just see if I can I'm not sure what that is, UCC3800, could be some kind of op amp, looks like we've got a voltage regulator there, probably 3.3 volts, another little 5 pin IC there again, which is another 7S14B by the look of it. Looks like another 3.3 volt regulator there. We've got a few fuses and some LED indicators. I'm not sure what that chip is there. I'll see if I can look that one up. Uh, that looks like some kind of serial EEPROM, I would guess. A 95020. And there's another one of those little 7S14Bs as well. And then a microcontroller. So that's about all on this side of the board. And there's a crystal there. Crystal oscillator. Right, let's flip the board over. And I may need to refocus this. So this is the reverse side of the mains section. see anything obvious around about here I've got a couple of diodes there probably rectifier from the output of the transformer uh, 
Look at the diodes down there. Probably a resistor for measuring current there, I'd guess. This is on the low voltage side now. So the 0.47 ohm resistor. And a few diodes round about here. I guess that's where the battery power comes in here. That's about it on this side. Well, I can't see anything obvious. Right, I think the first thing I want to do is actually check this mains fuse. Because, I mean, it could just be something as simple as the mains fuse. So, I'll just flip this board over. And it looks like the power comes in here, goes through this track, through the fuse, so we'll just go into continuity and we'll just check, yeah, so the fuse is intact, where does it go then, it goes through here to this filter, so we should get continuity from here to there, sorry, and then from this pin it'll go through the fuse and should end up here, and it does. Right, where does it go next? It looks like it goes down here somewhere and then should end up at the bridge rectifier. So, let's see. Yeah, so we've got continuity to there. And continuity to there. Right. Let's see if the bridge rectifier is okay. So let's go into diode check. these leads around a second right so that's diodes okay because this is where the AC comes in on the center two pins so this must be the negative so yeah yep so those diodes okay you should get a reading of about 0.5 or so right so I'll put the negative here yeah Right, so both of those diodes are okay in there as well. So the bridge rectifier is okay. Let's see if there's any voltage in this mains cap. Right, so we should have continuity. Right, so that must be the negative, which it is. And the positive should go to here. Right, so it looks like the mains input side of the power supply is okay. I think we'll power it up and I might see if I can pull up a data sheet for this IC here. So I'm just going to power this up now. And as always, be careful when working on main stuff. Ready? Right, we should have power on there now. So this should be live. So I'm carefully going to check that we've got power there. We've actually got 251 volts there. I really should get onto the power company around here because our voltage is always fairly high and it's nothing to do with the solar because it's pitch black outside at the moment. So 251 volts or 251 and a half. So we've got power there. Well, this just looks completely dead. Right, I'm just going to knock it back off a moment. I'm just going to carefully flip this over. It's now unplugged, but there will still be power in this capacitor. So, let's just have a look. Well, at least it must have a bleeder resistor across it because the voltage is dropping quite rapidly. Right. So, the next thing I want to do is try and pull up a data sheet for this chip. And we'll see if we can measure the voltage is now on us. Just to make sure that the chip's getting the correct voltages. So I've got it powered up at the moment. And I think this is a ground here. And the power comes in on pin 7, which is this pin here. And we've got 8.5 volts. 
I'm not sure if that's a little bit low, that. So I'm sure it said something about 15 volts in the data sheet. And that pins the output, but we'll not be to measure that. And I'll not be to use the scope on it with it being alive. This pin here is supposed to be 5 volt reference. So that comes out of the chip. And it looks like we're only getting 1 volt on there, so that's not right. So I think the problem is going to be around here somewhere. Right, I'm just going to unplug this again for now. Right, this little IC here is an inverter. And this pin here is the supply voltage, which should be 5 volts. And this pin here is ground. So let's just see. I think this is ground on the capacitor here. So let's just see if I've got ground here. I get these probes on properly. Right, there we go. So that's ground. And that's ground. I think this capacitor has just been used as a smoothing capacitor for the incoming supply to the chip. I'll just see if I can try and get my probe on there. Right, so that's that. So, where does this get its 5 volt from? Does it come from the chip? Actually, no, that's the output. The 5 volt comes in on this pin. Right, so this IC here is being powered from the 5 volt reference coming out of this chip. However, because we've only got 1 volt coming out of here, this chip isn't being powered up. And I guess that chip is probably what drives the main MOSFET here. I think this is a four layer board as well, so it's a bit it's a bit hard to it's a little bit hard to work out where all these tracks go. It would be a bit easier if it was a two layer board, but with it being a four layer board it's a bit more difficult. Right, so we've only got one volt on this and we should have five, so why is that? And is 8 volts enough? So where does this get fed from? I've got it via here. Let's flip this over. So we've got a 220k resistor here. I'm just wondering if that comes from the supply. And it does. So I wonder if that's being used to drop the voltage. And it looks like possibly we've got a Zena diode here. I'll just zoom down a little bit. So it looks like the mains comes in here, gets dropped through that resistor. And then we've got a diode there. So that's probably a Zena diode, I would think. And then that seems to go to the power supply of the chip. I'm just going to power this back up again. I'll just zoom out. Right, I'm just going to power this up again now. And that's now live. So I'll just go on the ground here. I'll go on volts DC. Let's just see what we'll get here. Right, so we've got 350 volts there. And 8.5 on the other side. Right, so that's definitely the supply to that chip then. Right, I'm going to have a look at the data sheet on this chip again just to see if 8.5 volts is enough. Well, according to the data sheet, the minimum 
operating voltage is 8.2 volts for the IC so 8.5 should be okay so unless the IC itself has failed I think what I might do just to try and I'll be a bit safe and I'll be able to use the scope as well is if I hook the bench power supply up it said on the specs about bringing the voltage up to 15 volts for normal operation and the 8.5 volts was just for start up so I might try connecting the bench power supply up and just injecting voltage on here just to see if we get any output out of this chip just in case you know the chip itself has failed Right, I think I'll do that. So I've got the bench power supply set up to 8.5 volts. So we'll just check that on this capacitor here. Get me probes on. Right, so we've got 8.5 volts there. And um, we'll just check on the chip, 8.5 volts. But we've only got, well, we've only got 0 0.1 coming out of the voltage reference now. I'm just going to try up in the voltage a little bit. Alright, I'm on 8.8 .8 now. Let's just try that. I've got 5 volts there now. So I wonder if this chip's just not getting just quite enough power. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll, we'll try with the scope. We'll just see if we get any oscillations or whatever on this chip, just in case it has failed internally. Right, we've got the scope hooked up now. So the output of the chip should be this pin here. something going on there I can't seem to get it quite stable on the screen though but we are getting a square wave output there from the chip there we go so the input of this little IC here is this middle one it's a bit hard to see let's see if I can just get it on there seem to have some kind of sawtooth waveform on there and what do we get on the output of this which I think is that pin there so we seem to have a nice square wave on the output so so this IC seems to be working and that IC seems to be working, it just seems like we're just not quite getting enough voltage. Then what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna try turning the voltage back down on the power supply. And we'll just see when this starts oscillating. And we'll start getting five volts out of it. So I'm on 8.53 at the moment. Yeah, that worked. I'll just turn it down to 8.50 no so it's literally the tiniest of voltage drop seems to be stopping this from working but I'm sure the minimum start of voltage of this was supposed to be I think it said 7.9 or 7.8 or something like that so perhaps this IC is slightly faulty so I don't know whether to try and get a replacement I should check this dropout resistor but then again we're getting 8.5 volts 
just going to check the resistance of this resistor here. Let's take this wire off for now and we'll just switch this bench power supply in. Scope off so it's a little bit quieter. I might have to take this out because I think we're measuring capacitors and things. I'm just getting myself a new rework station. One of these Aten ST862Ds. So let's see if we can get this off then. Right, so that's not too far out of spec. 220k. And we've got 217.8. Looks a little bit scorched this board here. So I'm just wondering if it is the IC. Slightly out of tolerance or something. And I'll just solder that back on. I'm just going to add a little bit of flux on that. Right, so the only other thing I could think that might affect it would be the capacitor there, but I think I'm going to have to order one of those ICs. I'm fairly sure it's the chip. But it seems strange how it works, but just a little bit higher voltage. Definitely a bit of a strange one, this one. I think I'll pull this capacitor out. We'll just check this capacitor just to rule it out. I'm just going to use a little bit of low melt solder on it just to make it easier to remove. It's got a little bit of flux to that as well. It's just a little bit of an awkward space, that's all. Right, there we go. I'll clean that area up in a second. Right, so I've soldered a couple of bits of wire just on the capacitor there, so we can test it with the component tester. And for some reason, it thinks it's an 18 volt Zener diode. Well, that's not right, is it? Let's just try these wires in a different... That's better. But then again, I don't think the ESR and the V loss and that looks right on this. So it could well just be that capacitor. Right, I'm going to see if I can find a replacement capacitor and we'll try that in. Because if that wasn't getting a clean supply voltage, that might have been what was stopping it from working. Right, I'll go and get a replacement capacitor and then I'll be back. Right, so unfortunately I haven't got any surface mount capacitors of that value. This is a 50 volt, 47 microfarad. But I've found a through hole one. If we test this one here. That's a lot better, isn't it? So I'm going to see if I can solder this one in place, but it looks like it might be a bit tricky. Alright, after a bit of perseverance, I've managed to solder that capacitor in place. Alright, so I think we'll give it a try now. So I need to couple it back up to the mains again. Alright, I'm just going to power it on now. Well, hey, we've got a green light flashing. Excellent. Right, let's just uh, 
get the test meter out. And we'll see if we've got any voltages on this. I'm just going to zoom out a fraction more. Let's go on to volts DC. I'm not sure if we'll get any output on this or not. It looks like we do. Yep. 27 volts. I'm not sure what other voltages we're supposed to get. I'll just go and grab his bit of paper. Two seconds. Alright, back with the bit of paper. So let's see. 42. Excellent. 27.7, we should have a 5 volts and then there was some other voltages on these here which we mightn't get because he said these seem to be signals from the PSU to the fire alarm so right, but all the voltages seem there now so it was just that capacitor there then excellent oh well another successful repair on this one then so £422 for a replacement board or about 20 pence for a capacitor to repair it. Bit of a no-brainer, isn't it? Right then, if you enjoyed this video, please give it the thumbs up. If you want to see more like it, please subscribe. Any comments or questions, please leave it in the comment section below. And as always, have a great day. Thanks for watching.